This episode of The Candid Frame is sponsored by the Charcoal Book Club. Working with the most respected names in contemporary photography, Charcoal selects and delivers essential photo books to a worldwide community of collectors. Each month, members receive a signed first edition monograph and an exclusive print to add to their collections. Join the club by visiting charcoalbookclub.com and use the promo code THECANDIDFRAME at checkout and receive a 10% discount on your first membership payment. We also have the support of LensRentals.com, the largest online camera rental house in the U.S. They carry the most popular brands and models of cameras, lenses, and anything you need for video, lighting, post-processing, and more. Whether you need something for a one-time assignment or want to test it out before you buy, LensRentals.com is there to help. Explore their extensive inventory and save 10% on your first order when you sign up for their newsletter at LensRentals.com forward slash newsletter. Today's guest, Sandra Dono, began her photographic career at 60 years of age. She received the gift of a photo workshop from her daughter who thought it would be a great experience that they could share together. It was a transformative experience that eventually led the Brazilian-born photographer to enter the world of fine art photography and book publishing. Her latest book, Aguas de Oro, which means Waters of Gold, is her love letter to the beaches of her hometown in Brazil. Her ethereal images are intimate and personal and capture the magic of both memory and nature. I find her work and story inspiring. And I hope you will as well. This is Ebody and X, and welcome back to the Candid Frame. Well, welcome to the show. It's a real pleasure to, to have you. It's very nice to be with you also. When I opened up your book, I was really Thank you. Yeah, when I opened up your book, I was really amazed at the work. I really loved it. And then when I found out more about your story, I was even more eager to speak with you. I, I know you've had the uh, chance to talk about your work and, and your career thus far, but I, I'm, I want to know a little more about your life before you picked up uh, a camera, because I know you, you started really getting into photography when you were 60, but what was your life before all that? Yeah, it was very different. My, my sister is a painter, and she does sculptures also. My brother is a very good writer, he writes, and I was always the one not gifted for arts. I was always the, the business one that organized things. And, you know, I never saw myself doing anything artistic, never in my life. So that's why it was such mm. a surprise to find that I had something inside of me. I have no idea. How, I mean, how did I have it and not know it? I don't understand. Not only have something that I could do, but also that I have so much joy doing. And I just found out at 60. Yeah. But thank God I found out. <laughs> where, where do you rank in terms of your siblings? Are you a younger one, the middle, the oldest? I'm the oldest, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm the oldest. I'm used to organizing everyone's lives. <laughs> uh so you're, you're the i'm the oldest too so i i completely get that that idea of being having to be the the rational one and the one running point yeah uh, a good amount of the time <laughs> i but i wonder though if one of the reasons you may not have seen yourself as creative was it because you saw your siblings being creative and there was a comparison going on do you think that that was part of it? No, no, I never even thought about it because I was happy and very happy doing what I was doing, you know? So it was business-like things and I was fine with it. There was no complaints. I was good. It's only what, what I don't understand is how many, I mean, what puzzles me is... How many things do we have inside of ourselves that we have no idea that we could create and we die without knowing? 
because that's what happened to me. I, yeah. If my daughter hadn't taken me, and it was a joke, we were joking. I was saying, you're taking me to a class of photography that I don't know how to take photography. I always had the stomachic little thing. <laughs> I mean, this is a joke. Oh, mommy, it's your birthday. We are going to spend it together. I said, yeah, but you, she, she had her mind in university was photography. So she knew what she was talking about. I said, you're taking me to a class with people that are going to talk about something. That, but first of all, that's surreal that she took me. She only wanted to spend time with me. But at the same time, she wanted to do her photography course. So she said, let's bring mommy, because yeah. like that, I killed two with one. And mother's here for, for birthday, but I do what I like also. So that was the concept in the beginning. And in the end, the funny thing, I continued photography, and she, she's a school teacher. So she's not doing any photography. Oh, how really? Did, did that oh, that's funny. Yeah, how, how did this happen? <laughs> She's a very, very happy school teacher. Well, life, She's life is very mysterious. Happy. She loves her profession. She wouldn't change it for anything. But in the end, it's, but if she had never taken me there, I would never have owned a camera. I, my husband had a very old, 10-year-old camera. that is, He said, okay, use this. It was a Nikon. I said, yeah, I use it, but I have no idea what to do. So <laughs> this is. And I had, I think it was a combination of also, Were you? I had very good teachers. I had Rebecca and Alex Webb, and they were very patient, even without me knowing how to do anything. They just said, go out and have fun and enjoy it and see what we, you get. And that's what I did. And I think my, my daughter never made fun of me, which helped a lot, because if she had... I would have closed up, and I would never explore that. Yeah, yeah. Going into a workshop, much less with Alex and Rebecca Webb, <laughs> can be very intimidating. And uh, it it's probably a good thing you didn't know who they were when you took the workshop. But I had no idea. Um, I think it's were. a real testament that I had no yeah. idea. Who they, but I, I think, think it was a good testament to the fact that they were really. I'm older, so that helps. I think also that I don't take it seriously because, you know, I'm older. This is not my main thing in life. So, okay, they're going to lose their time with me and I'm going to lose my time here. But this is, I don't, I didn't take it personally because obviously I didn't know how to do anything. And I remember them, I played tennis and I was playing tennis every morning, even with the workshop, I still wanted to play tennis. And I took, a picture of a tennis ball in the courts and they said oh that's a very interesting ball. <laughs> I think they couldn't I mean they didn't know what to do with me <laughs> <laughs> but they were patient which is in, is important I think that for anyone who's serving as a teacher you really have to meet people where they where they are you know, if you have someone who is in, in, as experienced as you were, I think it, it can be a sort of a balance between being able to help the person who really isn't familiar with all the technology or the approach. And you have other students there as well. But that's 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 your job to be able to yeah. adapt for the variety of people that you have there. And I think you were very blessed that you had two people uh, who were very patient above all else. That, that's very important. Very patient and very, it's okay, just go out. It's fine. They didn't feel, make me feel bad about it. You know, I said, that's it. And, and we bonded and we became friends. And they're coming to visit me soon in California. So it was nice. It was a oh, lovely. very nice. Yeah, very, very nice. They are great people and I'm very grateful that they really let me go and not criticize or say, look, you, you should do something else, which I, I thought with the pictures I took, I, I swear to you, they, they should have told me, go and do something else. But that gave me the incentive because I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. You know, I think one of the things that I, when I see your work, 
I think that that lack of technical knowledge, especially at, at the beginning, and your your lack of obsession on it, really allows you to get through a lot of the things that serve as obstacles for a lot of other photographers. You're very right. And I don't care. But when you see kids pick up a camera for the first time, they just do it for the joy of it. They're just having fun. They don't know the difference between an f-stop and a shutter speed and the difference between a focal length or, you know, a Nikon or Canon or Fuji. None of that stuff really matters to them. It's all about the being able to create. And I think whether you you know, whether they're 10 or 60 when they pick up the camera, that's the thing that is more important than anything else. It's that, that joy of discovery and exploration that results in a photographer, I think, becoming an exceptional photographer. Because if you can hold on to that, then whatever voice or vision that particular, photog that particular photographer has can come to the fore. And I think that that's, that's obviously, to my eye, something that's happened with you. Yeah, I really have fun. I found something out in my life. It's a, a gift that came to me without me expecting. And it gives me so much joy every day that I go out. I'm always happy to come back and look at it and see what I did. And I jump up and down. And it is. I go back. I think that uh, photography enables me to be a child again. Yeah, that's the best. That's what I almost... I, I see it like that. I see like what I feel is... I'm going treasure hunting. That's the feeling I have when I get out of the house. Okay, where, where, where is the treasure? Let's go and look. You know, that's the thing that I feel every time I go out. And it's so nice, so, so nice. My camera is my best companion. <laughs> that's the, exactly the same approach that I take. I don't go out with any sort of pre-assumptions of what I'm going to shoot or how I'm going to shoot. I feel like I want to play in the sandbox because I think that's, for me, that is what, what works best. I agree. But I the, agree. But one of the things that can happen is that because the great majority of people don't, don't approach it that way, they approach it very technically and they do it very purpose-based. Purpose the inclination for a new photographer is to do what everyone else is doing. And, and as I already said, that could be a detriment to, to the work. What helped you not fall into that rabbit hole and stay in that place where you're having joy and you're, and you're playing? What helped you to do that? I think I, I, there was a, I had a teacher who said, uh, I went to another workshop and he said, um, you should go out with a purpose. Exactly what you're saying, with a purpose of not to lose time, do what I could never do it. And I always came back and I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. I cannot photograph like that. I just want to look around me and whatever it is that is interesting for me, I'll take a picture. I can't do it another way. I can't. It wouldn't be fun. It would be like uh, a task. I don't want it that way. I want to have fun. It's it's an important part of, of it for me. It's not to take myself seriously, just have fun. Whatever comes out is a gift, a blessing. It's great. Every time I won a competition, wow, I never thought I could do it. You know, it's great. And it's, I'm 68. So everything that comes my way, I'm happy, but I'm not going to be sad if I don't get it. You know, because that defeats the purpose. At 68, if I become sad, that's really horrible. So my problem, my, my thing is the only thing that I have some anguish is about the amount of time that I have to photograph because I know that at 68, you don't have eternity. So it's a limited amount. So I, that's the only thing that I know that I have to enjoy it every day very much and I won't have it for very long because maybe you know i break a hip or whatever you know at 68 anything can happen so yeah. i hope it doesn't happen but i have to live with that with that uh i have to hurry 
I have to do everything that I want to do the quickest possible because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I completely get get that sentiment, but I, I wanna I wanna suggest that that there are people who have a lot more time, who have had a lot more time, and haven't made the kind of visual discoveries that you have in just eight years. So thank you. Having more time doesn't necessarily mean yeah. that you'll be able to really do something substantive with the work. That's true. Um, because when I look at your book. One of the things that uh, amazed me looking at the, at the work was how much I felt looking at the photographs. The photographs are very emotive. There's a lot of feeling there for the, yeah, the, it's my town. not just the fact that it's what? It's my town. I mean, it's where I have yeah. my, my first years. So there's a lot of emotion there. And going back to seeing your town after many years, it's a very interesting thing because it's a completely different place. But it's not in some things. It's exactly the same place. But in other things, it's very different. So it's, uh, it's funny. It's a funny. There's always that joy that they have with the Brazilians. They have so much joy. And the singing and the... It's very nice. That part is still the same, even with the difficulties that they go through. But there are other things that weren't there so much when I was growing up. There wasn't so much violence, so that wasn't there. Today, you have to deal with that much more. It's a much more difficult society. So it's a very funny thing to see it again. Go back and see the same place you went as a child, and seeing it with your eyes and what happened to the town. And it's, it's funny. At the same time, it's a great thing that it was the beaches in my time when I was small. It was only for a certain amount of people who lived very near because there wasn't transportation. Now everyone can come because there's the subway, the underground, that they didn't have at that time. So you can, beaches are not for only the elite people now it's for everyone so that is a completely different beach and very interesting beach and that's where they have the joy because i think that when they go back home it's not so joyful their lives i mean it's tough it's not easy but those are the moments they're with the family they're playing they're yeah, that so it's a nice time and i like to see nice things i don't like to see the bad things in my pictures never have a friend who made the book the same time as mine, or from a Brazil also. And her scenes are from a very sad Brazil, which is really, it's true, it exists. And mine is a much more joyful Brazil because that's what I want to see. I don't want to be, see the bad part. I want to see maybe at these only few moments that these people are happy, but I want to see that. It's not really, it's a piece of the reality. Yeah, and and the, the, the intimacy that you bring to those photographs, I really think speak to that, that sense that you're expressing in terms of your joy. You're not shooting from a distance. You're right there in the mix with all of these people that are running <laughs> around and playing in the beach and you feel like you're a part of it. Does that, did that come naturally to you or is that something that you yeah. had to sort of get the courage up to do? No, no, not at all. I just throw myself on the floor and come back full of sand and water. <laughs> I have to put my Brazilian side, you see, I don't care. Brazilians are very in that, very informal. They just do it. And who cares if someone's seen me? I don't care. And that that's very, it's, it was very spontaneous. I didn't think twice. But people were saying, what is this crazy woman doing lying down there on the beach? What, what is she doing? <laughs> uh, I had a lot of fun. Uh, because there's a lot of interaction afterwards. And they... They call you and they want to talk to you. And it's very funny. It's, it was a lot of fun to do it. I find that when I do that, when I just go in and I'm playful, that people respond to that, even if I'm not in Brazil. Yeah. You know, I think there's something about what you bring 
in terms of yourself you know if you don't just bring in the camera and sort of like shove that into their 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 space and into their world and then and don't sort of interact or become part of it th there could be some resistance if not some intolerance to what you're doing but yeah. you know when you're being playful yeah i think people at least most people get that and they're amused if nothing else yeah and they see that you're trying to to take the best picture of you doing a big effort because you're on the floor you're doing i don't know what you're trying to do the nicest photo that you can so they're seeing that you're making an effort you're not just there doing click 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 so yes they they've been it has been a great experience and i think i gained a lot in the part of the interaction with human beings i there were many instances that people on the beach helped me. There was once, there was a whole family, and they were doing kind of a barbecue in the beach and everything. And the lady came to me and said, look, this guy, is, he already stole two iPhones, or two phones, and he's looking at you. He's going to rob your camera. Come and sit with us. I said, oh, my God. How, how kind. And I went and I spent a long time having lunch with them. They never saw me. I mean, <laughs> how, why was she, she was so kind for nothing because she, what does she care if I lose my camera? I mean, she was really kind. And I found a lot of things like that. A lot of people who helped me, you know, protect me. They said, look, they call me sometimes uh, Chichi, auntie, auntie. Auntie, don't go there. <laughs> don't go there. That's dangerous. <laughs> so it's very nice because you gain so much in other things in the social life. Oh yeah, that's when it's that's when it's the best. Those human interactions yeah. when you've had exactly. a chance to even have a the briefest of relationships with someone. I for me, I always love those moments when I have them. Um, I was out on the street a couple of weeks ago and the family of uh, from Romania stopped me and they wanted me to take their a family picture while they were traveling in, in Los Angeles. And I guess they didn't have a camera with them. So I just, I made some portraits of them. I talked to them for a little while and emailed them the, the picture. And for me, that encounter even yeah. though I didn't learn a whole lot about them, that for me helped to make my day because that that experience trumped any photograph I could have made made that day just because I had, you know, especially if, after the last two years, having a exactly. nice encounter with perfect strangers is really special. And I, I'm yeah. really hungry for that as much as I am making photographs. And I think that kind of energy, that kind of curiosity about people makes for the best kinds of photographers, especially if they have an interest in people. And it seems like that's something that you possess from looking at, yeah. at your whole body of work. It's very important. For me, it was like uh, getting out of my little bubble life, you know? My life was, it's a lot of little bubble it's very good when you can get out and you see other things and other realities and you're offered to get into their lives and even for five minutes but you can relate to their problems and you can understand what is out of your little shell <laughs> and i think that's was one of the best things that happened to me it was wonderful some very sad things that I saw, I think, very sad, but that's part of it. But it is what is out there. And, and sometimes you don't even have the time to stop five minutes because you're always running somewhere. So photography gives you that. You, If you want, you can stop and talk to someone and ask someone and interact with someone. And someone sometimes is curious and they come to you and ask you, how did you do, what are you photographing? Many times with reflections, they come to me and say, what are you doing? And I show them, you know, I'm doing a reflection. Uh, you see it here, this is what comes out, and, you know, and, and, uh, and it's very nice. It's, it's a very nice feeling you have, and you gain a lot. I think you gain very much. 
Ja. Photography can be about opportunities for building community, especially revolving around photographic work that makes a difference. That's what I love about the Curious Society, a member-supported nonprofit that has created an organization devoted to the work of today's best photojournalists and documentary photographers. If you have a passion for telling stories with photographs, you can start being a part of this community by becoming a member and joining in on their weekly hangouts on Clubhouse every Tuesday. Find out more by visiting their website at curiousociety.org. Our friends at the Charcoal Book Club have just opened up a call for entries for the 6th Annual Chico Hot Springs Portfolio Review and Publishing Prize. The Chico Review is a juried photo book retreat that takes place over a week in Chico Hot Springs in Montana. 64 photographers will be selected by a jury and invited to spend the week taking part in portfolio reviews, artist lectures, and panel discussions. And a grand prize winner will be awarded the Charles Cole Publishing Prize and have a book published through the Charles Cole Book Club. Find out more by visiting ChicoReview.com and remember, the deadline is December 26th. Because you came from having no experience before, at what point did you ha- begin to have some confidence that the way that you were seeing and the way that you were making photographs was what you were meant to do? and and not be dissuaded by the fact that what you were creating was unlike what a lot of other people out there were making. I don't know. I think there's so many good photographs, so I, I feel so, you know, it's so difficult because there's so many inventive and intelligent and wonderful. So it's so difficult to put yourself, compare yourself to anything because... You're so small. <laughs> There's so many wonderful geniuses and giants. I mean, so if, you know, I, I don't, I don't do it. I'm, for example, my next book is going to be a completely different book because I found something out, a, a different way of doing things that I want to explore. It's completely different. But for me, it's like this. It's. Uh, I want to do something different, then I find something else, and then I want to do something different, and it's the joy of doing and seeing something different. It's the seeing something different that makes me happy every day. If I see something that I think uh, it's unusual, I love it, but I, I wouldn't, Yeah. I don't know why. I'm, you know, I'm just in a fun journey, and I don't like to, whatever comes, comes, and I'm having fun, and not more than that. I I think it's a really healthy way to be, because I think that the, I think often the pursuit becomes, I want to be good, whatever that means, which often requires comparison or others' approval. And what I'm hearing from you is that that's not at all what you're trying to do. You're instead no, just having I a good time experimenting and trying to, yeah, and trying to discover new things. And that's why you're 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 as bold as you are in in being in, as inventive with your photography as you have been over the past eight years. Exactly. It's just that I don't need. I I have a very good life. I always had. I'm very blessed with many things, and this is something that I want to. It's really something that is great because it gives me this joy. And I don't want it about making myself this or that or the other or getting a prize or not getting the prize. We are going to the grave anyway. So let's say let's have fun <laughs> because, I mean, it's, you know, if I have fun, I do things that are, are nice things. If I ever inspire someone, that's great. So more than that, I don't need it. 
the printing of the book is is one of the things that I really like. Uh, half of the book is printed in this sort of goldish um, hue, where the latter yeah. half is sort of a bluish hue. And that's something that's the result of the printing, not so much anything that you did in, in Photoshop or in camera. Tell me about the idea and the concept behind okay. that unusual choice in terms of printing your images in this way. The choice was my publisher, because these photos are all done in one, 99%, in one beach. So if you saw them one after the other, without any variation, maybe you would be bored. This is a way of making it more fun, as if they are in different places, but they are not. They're exactly in the same beach. The mountain is in the background. Everything is the same. But it's a way of you not, you know, being, paying more attention to the book. And he had the idea. And he, it's three colors. It's the gold, it's silver, and blue in the middle. And I thought mm, it was okay. fabulous because, uh, you know, it, it was very difficult to do. In London, we tried to prove it in small pictures, but we didn't know if it would come right at the moment of the printing. And the, my publisher, David Chicky, he said, uh, you have to, it's a leap of faith. There's nothing we can do. We have to go to print and see what happens. And I think he had the best idea because if not, it would be, you would be tired of the same, you know, thing. This gives it a more of a movement, makes it much more interesting, makes it, you realize that, you know, sometimes there's more blue. So it's a accentuates bluish, and, you know, so it, he's very good. <laughs> My public is very, yeah. very good. No, and I think it helps. To, and, and you're working often with some high contrast scenes you're dealing with blacks and highlights some mid-tones you're dealing with silhouettes or side light and i think that the the toning of the images by the the printing process really brings that out even more it brings out the strengths that are inherent to the photographs all already so i think that it's Yes, you can see it as a way of not making things boring, but I think it, it, it also sort of brings out the qualities that make the images so good. It accentuates what you were doing, yeah. you know, in it's your camera, which is yeah. a great thing. Yes, that's true. It does. And they have those printed in, in Italy. And they were wonderful also because they, until they didn't get it right, they tried and tried and tried. And wow. What a patience. I mean, really, wow. So it was wonderful. Also, the printers were wonderful. Yeah, you want that in a printer. <laughs> oh, and they want perfection. Oh, that's awesome. And they really try. And I, it's, the process is amazing. And they call me and I go downstairs. And they, they say, not good. <laughs> I'll say, okay, if you don't think it's good, that's fine. <laughs> so I go upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> so it's. Yeah, they really wanted perfection. They and they enjoyed doing that book also. They really did. It was very nice. Very nice family I have there. This uh, EBS in Verona. Really nice people. Wonderful. Very professional. Very good. You have several um, uh, projects in your in your on your website that that seem to revolve around multiple exposures. Tell me more about those because I find those images really fascinating. I really love those photographs, but I want you to tell me more about how you came to use that approach and what do you feel you were getting from that particular method of, of photographing that just a single image wasn't doing for you? I use, it's, it's uh, reflections. Those are reflections. That's what I do. I do a lot of reflection and that's my, going to be my... Those are reflections. Yeah. I never do double spur. I always do a reflection. And I love reflections. I love because I think it's what you see, but you don't see because you see it in double and triple or you see it, you know, distorted. So I love reflections. So that's my third book is going to be two things. It's because the, this reality of COVID you couldn't take pictures because there was no one outside. You would go outside and there was nothing. So uh, I'm using the reflections 
and I'm using something else that I, I do in the computer, that I put two pictures together. So it's this new reality that we have, this perception that, you know, what do we do with if the world, there's no one outside for you to photograph, what do you do? So it was a way of getting through COVID. So it was very good for me. Uh, it gave me a purpose and I could, and I really enjoyed it. And I love reflection. And I do reflections in the most uh, bizarre places. I reflect in metal. I reflect in everywhere. Everywhere that you, I can find something, I reflect. I try to. And, and some people, what you say in the streets, they say, what are you doing? <laughs> I say, yeah, I know. You know, the, it's a reflection. <laughs> But it's, I do everything. I do the rear, you know, the mirror of the car. I do the metal of the car. Everything. I reflect everywhere. I love reflection. Because they are, they are the real world. They're not the, your, your world. You know, that, that ambiguity of... Oh, absolutely. And it's wonderful when you open your eye to, to that part of the world. I'm, I'm not as adept at that as I would like to be. I know photographer friends who are really good at being able to recognize the potential of a, a reflection and make magic happen with it. That's a wonderful talent to have honed. And I'm going to have to go through those images again, because those are those are some of my favorites on your on your site, the way that you use the shapes and the shadows and the colors. And I, I, I th there are images that that make you me stop and linger. I want to explore. And for me, that's that's always the best yeah, kind of it, photograph. It's Not like one a that puzzle. I just want to swipe by in a second, move on to the next. It's like yeah. a what? A puzzle. You don't understand really what is the little bird yes. here. What is this and what is which is what you said. You stop to to understand it, to be able to understand it, which is very interesting. But when I when I take the picture, I'm not conscious of what I'm taking. I'm don't I don't see. I see that there's something, but I don't really know what I did until I come back home. It's very strange. It's like mm -hmm. it's like driving. I know I'm putting it in first gear, second gear, whatever, but I'm not conscious what I'm doing. I'm, I I couldn't tell you at the moment. You know, I know I'm. I know I go there. I know I go always to light, always against light. Normally, I love bright colors, reflections. Always go after reflections everywhere. But I don't really know the composition until I get home. I see it when I see it. I know sometimes, oh, maybe this is good, but I don't know. Mm. Oh, yeah. I know that feeling very well. Because <laughs> I don't look at my pictures. I don't. I turn off my the screen on my back of my camera so it doesn't immediately play, play, it, play it back. Yeah. So I don't shoot and then look at the screen. It's it's black. So I'm treating it like it's a film camera. And I because I just want to focus on seeing and making photographs. I'll look at them later, but yeah. I don't want to get distracted by, oh, let me see what I did because I may I'll miss something. But more importantly, it will take me out of that that space yeah. where I'm just playing because as soon as I start looking at them, I start passing judgment on them. Yes, exactly. And, and you that's say, oh, trouble for me. I have to do this or have to do that. You have to take that one away of your, get it out away from you. Just go with your gut feeling and do whatever you have to do. And then you sort yeah. it out. Later. Oh yeah, absolutely. Out. So you, you, you finished your second book. You're on your way to your third. Tell me yeah. from the first to the second book, what was the, what was the difference in the experience for you? Oh, the second was much more fun to do because it's more of a story of my town. So it's a connect of a town or of a beach, really. So it's more connected. It's more, it's more what I lived. The other one is women are everywhere, but there's no, uh, I don't think there's so much, I, emotionally, this, the second one was much more near my heart, I will say. And how did it all come together? How did you 
find the publisher and you know someone to you know rep your your book and all that all of those things because I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are very curious oh, about that yeah oh well i was i went to another a second workshop with rebecca and alex with and my daughter in santa fe and uh and it was about book publishing and it was done at this radius books it was in their office i was doing my thing and you know you put your pictures and you try to see how a book would come out and they talk about you know all these things related to publishing a book and then david who's the main person at radius he he came to me one day and said sandra i know you're having fun and you don't take yourself seriously, but you should continue to take pictures. I know you're doing it because of your daughter and you're having fun with your daughter, uh, but you should continue to do photography. That was such a nice, I mean, to hear that is amazing. You are so nice. So many years after he said that, I went, knock, knock. You told me something many years ago. So now I'm here. Would you love it? <laughs> That's how I <laughs> <laughs> That's Maybe you uh, wouldn't like to have said that, but now I'm here. Knock, knock. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm not going away. <laughs> and I'm not going away. I'm very insistent. <laughs> and I remember things, so be careful what you say. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what does your daughter think of all all the things that you've achieved since, as you mentioned, when you did this workshop together, it was just more of a, a joke than anything else. Oh, she's very happy for me. She said, go, mama, go. <laughs> she's very happy for me. So the, the first book I dedicated to her, the second one to my middle son, and the third one will be to my oldest son. Then I finish with the children. <laughs> finish that. Then the husband is asking to have one book also dedicated to him. <laughs> I said, I don't know if oh, I Oh, yeah, read. yeah. Oh, uh, he's in, depends how he is. <laughs> so he's there. He has to wait. <laughs> so it's so nice. when you're, so now that, you know, the coming year, hopefully we'll be able to get back outside and interact more with people, hopefully. Um, you mentioned that you're you're working on another book, but in terms of your photography, what are you hoping to do in the coming year? Well, no, I, I'm not programmed. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Now I'm yeah. Until February, I need to think about the new book, but I'm still photographing, and whatever is good comes into the book. So if I get something good, it's still there's time to put it in. But I, there's no program. I, it's something I'll figure, it, I'll find out. I don't know. I, I don't have anxiety about that. It will come. It will be something different because our eyes develop each time they see different things. So I know they, because that happened to me. I saw this and then I see this and then I see this and then I see this. It happens. You, you are... Your vision expands. You pay attention to things that you didn't before, and it will happen. So it will be okay. It, I don't know what it, it will be. I have no idea. But something will come up. And I'm sure it's going to be great. Thank you. Because if, if the work that you've already created is just any is an example, uh, you have a wonderful eye and a wonderful talent. And I, I look forward to, to seeing what you come up with next. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, my last question is one that I ask each guest, and I ask them to recommend another photographer for our listeners to discover and explore. And it can be anyone, someone you've long admired or someone you've recently discovered. So who would that one photographer be and why? I admire a lot for different reasons, two photographers. They've, I think, and both of them were very important for me. Uh, Alex Webb and Georgi Pinkesov. Completely different points of views, but I think both of them, uh, they helped me a lot to see completely different things. 
And I studied that. I mean, oh, I, read, I went to workshops with both of them and it was, I gained a lot, a lot, a lot. In one workshop, I gained a lot because I never went to university for this. So in my whole life, I did, I think, five workshops of a week each. I think three with Alex Webb and two with Pinkesop. Ah, and I did also two with David Allen Harvey. So, yeah, around five or six workshops that I did in my life. And that, that helped. That helped a lot. The problem, as you say, because you talk about your, your equipment, the problem is it is very expensive. A week of workshop is very expensive and not affordable for most people. So that's the big problem. But as I didn't go to university for that, I really needed, I never got the technical part. I have very bad technical part, but I needed at least to understand what they were looking at and learn from them. And I did. They opened my mind. Well, Sandra, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your story and your work. Really enjoyed having the chance to speak with you. Thank you so much. One of the benefits I enjoyed when I worked at Nikon and later Outdoor Photographer Magazine was the opportunity to play with the latest in photographic products. In our equipment locker, we had an incredible selection of camera bodies, lenses, and accessories that we could use at any time. It was a great part of the job. There are days when I miss such easy access, but now it's available both to you and to me through LensRentals.com. They actually have a larger selection than I ever could have imagined back in the day. Now, if I need something for a shoot or just want to experiment with it, they offer an affordable way for me to have it delivered right to my doorstep. It's a great way to get your hands on the latest and best in photographic gear. Check out their inventory and save 10% on your first order when you sign up for their newsletter at lendrentals.com forward slash newsletter. And thanks to all of you who have continued to support the Candor Frame, especially over the past year. Your contributions, both big and small, made a big difference for us. And if you haven't become a Patreon supporter yet, it's really easy to do. You can do that by contributing $5, $10, $20 or more a month by visiting patreon.com forward slash the Candor Frame. Just $5 a month from you can and will make a big difference. Thank you so much for your kindness and your support. Thanks to Sandra for joining us. Find out more about her and her work by visiting sandracateniordono.com. And remember to check out the Curious Society at curiousociety.org. I received the first issue of their magazine a few months back, and it is great. If you want a taste of the great work you'll be helping to support, purchasing that magazine would be a great start, and you'll be contributing to an organization that really is deserving of your support. And remember, check out their weekly discussion on Tuesday afternoons on the Clubhouse app. Your thoughts and feelings about this show matter. And if you haven't already, please write a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever service you use to listen to podcasts. It helps us to stand out among the many thousands of podcasts that are out there. Your voice makes a huge difference. And remember, you can support the show by contributing to our Patreon effort or make a one-time or recurring donation via PayPal. Thanks to David Fry and Daniel Chalmers for their recent contributions. We also provide a series of ebooks on photography available for purchase on our website. It's my way of sharing my experience and knowledge and another way for you to support the show. And if you're looking for absolutely every episode of The Candid Frame and you can't find it on whatever app you listen to, download the Candid Frame app, available for both Apple iOS and Android. And because of your generosity, it's free to download and use. No additional purchases are required. The Candor Frame's audio engineer is Martin Taylor, who you can find at the theothermartintaylor.com. The show's senior producer is Cynthia Parker. And our music is from Kevin McLeod, whose royalty-free music can be found at incompetech.com. And this is Ibarian X, and this is The Candid Frame.